Well, it looks like the OpenAI Strawberry model will be dropping a lot sooner than anticipated. According to the information.com, OpenAI plans to release Strawberry as part of its ChatGPT service in the next two weeks. Get over here and hit like. This is no time to freeze. So we're not 100% sure yet how that's going to look. It's not just going to be part of ChatGPT. It's some sort of a standalone offering. Maybe it'll be one of the options you get to pick from the drop down menu under ChatGPT or some other separate column or tab that you can choose. But the new thing that's going to be different about it is it's going to take time to think about the answer before answering. This thinking stage usually lasts 10 to 20 seconds, according to some of the early testers. So if you haven't been following the whole Q-Star, Strawberry model, all the various leaks and kind of like development updates that we've had, basically the whole point of it is it's supposed to be better at reasoning, multi-step planning, thinking through what it's supposed to do before doing it, etc. So just like in the past, you would use chain of thought prompting or, or chain of thought reasoning, basically asking the model to think through its answer step by step before answering. It would output its reasoning, it would walk through it and then give you the answer. And oftentimes that answer would be much better. With Strawberry, it seems like this sort of prompting mechanism is somehow built in. We've seen some other models, for example, use the like invisible, like almost like a scratch pad that you're not able to see unless you're able to kind of jailbreak it a little bit, where it kind of thinks to itself on the side here. Then once it has its kind of reasoning, it outputs the answer that you're looking for and that answer you can see. So with the strawberry model, this might be something similar to that. And what this could mean is that Strawberry will be better at math problems and coding, but also at more subjective business tasks, brainstorming product marketing strategies, etc. Now, some of the early testers said that maybe the 10 to 20 seconds of waiting is just not worth it for the quality improvement of the answers. We'll each have to kind of see and test it for ourselves to see if it's in fact worth the wait or not. But this is one of the things that OpenAI, that Sam Altman, have been talking about for a while. Sometimes you need an answer right away, right? So if you're running out of the house and you Google, what is the weather today? You want that answer immediately. You need that information now. There's tons of stuff that needs to be handled, that needs to be done, where you don't need the answer of the result right away. If you think about more working with coworkers, with, with interns, for example, you might give them some instructions that you don't expect them to complete instantly, right? They might go away, work on it for couple hours, couple days, couple weeks, and eventually come back to you and kind of outline what they did, how they completed it, etc. And with AI and kind of the move towards AI agents, this is one of the things that they've been talking about. Like, how do we create that space for the AI agents to go off, do the thing and only come back and tell you when it's done? So, for example, if you're trying to have some code written, maybe some sort of an app or a, a game that you're trying to develop, it'll be much better if the AI goes away, creates the code, goes off and takes maybe even several minutes to first of all kind of design what it's trying to do to think about then then write the code maybe do some sort of a troubleshooting i think most people would be very happy to just have it work in the background while they attend to some other task instead of having to go back and forth and you know have it correct various errors so certainly this idea of these ai models kind of working in the background on something while you might be doing something else that's a big step towards kind of that agentic behavior where it's able to execute tasks on its own and only report back to you when it's done. Yeah, I explained here on YouTube steps in. Philip, I believe his name is, he said, we just heard that the famed ChatGPT upgrade strawberries coming by September 24th. So basically, if you take the article, it's, I think it says two weeks. That's kind of the estimate. Like if it's within the next two weeks, it's at the latest going to be September 24th. I don't know if we have a specific date, but that's kind of like the timeline. But he's saying, but something doesn't make sense. It was a threat to humanity, according to certain OpenAI X staff, according to Reuters. It rises to human level reasoner, leaked to Bloomberg. But according to early testers, it's slightly better answers aren't worth the 10 to 20 second wait. And it often thinks for that long, even if you ask it not to. And it will be pricey. Something doesn't add up. Really looking forward to testing it on Simple Bench. Now, some people are saying, well, the strawberry isn't the big threat. It's the Orion that people have to uh, worry about. I also remember reading somewhere that the strawberry model that's going to be available to us, kind of the end users, isn't going to be the big thing. The full strawberry model, it's some sort of a quantized, minified version of it. Again, still a lot of questions. There's a lot we don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how well it does. Even if it doesn't do great on every single query, if it only does really well at certain specific queries, that would also be very powerful, especially at some point 
if OpenAI or whomever it figures out how to do some sort of a like a gating mechanism where it routes your question to the correct thing. We've already kind of seen that with it routing to the more expensive models versus the cheaper models for simpler answers. Maybe certain tasks that involve that chain of thought reasoning, that kind of deep planning before answering, maybe that's going to get routed to some form of the strawberry model. Again, we'll see what the hype is all about once it gets released in the next two weeks, unless it gets delayed. We've seen that certainly happen before. In other news, Apple confirms its special release called Skinterface Pro Plus max where everything is made out of human skin this is not real just to make sure everybody's aware of this this is not real this is yet another video by Eckler by design the same person that brought us the Star Wars music video and wow is it disturbing I don't know how he was able to come up with this but one thing that I absolutely loved about it is the fact that it starts out with more believable things Things that you could be like, really? They did that, right? So it starts out with a phone case that kind of looks like skin. I mean, it's wild, but you're like, okay, maybe, right? And it goes into <laughs> the VR goggles that it's made out of skin to headphones. That looks absolutely disturbing. Wow. Eventually getting into the truly bizarre, like at some point you're like, okay, you, you go from there's there's a 1% chance it's the truth to like there's there's just no, no, like what even is this? What is this? And I'm not even going to comment on this one. But Jimmy Apples is excited about the potential new release of the Strawberry model, saying the age of patience is over. It's finally release season. I'm basically talking about him leaving his cave of patience. We shall see. Mark the date on the calendar. We got two weeks. As other people have pointed out, I feel like there's a lot riding on this, and, and I'll tell you why. OpenAI has been kind of looked to as the leader, as people that have this kind of alien technology that's kind of ahead of the curve, etc. And a lot of the massive kind of bubble-like activity, the massive investments that are pouring into AI, I think at least in some small part are driven by OpenAI, by the hype surrounding it, right? Because you have this leak and it's saying, whoa, this is dangerous for you know humanity, this, this could kill us. And there's always this appearance that OpenAI maybe kind of has something hidden away in its labs underground that's much more powerful than anything that we've seen. There's kind of these like swirling hints and rumors and whispers about it. But I think if the next big thing to drop is underwhelming, if it's just a marginal improvement, if it takes 20 seconds to answer you, but the quality of the answers is not as good, if the advanced voice mode, once everybody has it, people realize that, hey, this is not that awesome, this is not that cool. If the next OpenAI model doesn't hit that order of magnitude, better performance, better abilities, whatever that next level is, if it's underwhelming, that could be like pouring a big bucket of cold water on a lot of this hype, a lot of this investments that are pouring into it, because they are kind of seen as being on the frontier whether that's accurate or not, but that's the perception that I think a lot of people have. They look to OpenAI to kind of like, this is where we're going. And certainly a lot of people left OpenAI, which kind of brings questions. If you're working at a company that's about to unleash AGI into the world, that's the foremost AI development company that has the latest, greatest secret technology, etc., and is just kind of on the upswing, do you leave? Do you go work for a competitor or do you leave and do your own startup or maybe even some other company that's kind of like tangentially related, but not is actually like an AI lab, like Andre Karpathy with his education company. He's teaching people about AI, but he's not working for like a AI development lab. So it does feel like a lot is riding on this, maybe not on this strawberry model in particular, but I think the point is that a lot of people are expecting something big out of open AI. I mean, myself included, I can't lie, but if it doesn't come, if it doesn't come this year, early next year, kind of the public sentiment is already slowly starting to change. People are questioning the hype train and where is it going? Are we at the end of the road? Now, don't get me wrong, even if kind of the capabilities of AI models were kind of like frozen where they are now and maybe just slight improvement for the next five, 10 years, even so, there's a lot of applications that can be had. Dario Amade recently on a podcast was saying how he agreed with this idea if, if everything was just like frozen in time, development was frozen in time right now, there would be still a big sort of effect as we figured out how to kind of apply this technology to certain situations, how to integrate it into business and research and everything else. So even if it stopped, there would be an effect. But really what everyone's kind of betting on 
is that 10x, that 100x improvements over time. The news out of OpenAI's Japan office, they're saying that the GPT Next, kind of like that code model, they use that Next as kind of the code word for the next model that they're going to release, whether that's GPT-5 or whatever naming thing they're going to use for that. But they were saying they're expecting it something like 100x, the effective compute of the previous model. And so each jump from GPT-2 to GPT-3, from 3 to 4, and from 4 to GPT Next, whatever that is, they're saying is effectively a 100x increase in what they're calling effective compute. So it's basically the idea of it's not just like hardware improvements and the amount of compute that's used, but also some algorithmic improvements that are making it more efficient. And that being equivalent, effectively, it's 100x, two orders of magnitude improvement. And hence all the hype. But if we find out that the next models will be 10% better, 20% better, it's still going to have an impact. But the hype train, I think, can be officially declared dead. But let me know what you think. Do you think that we're going to see something huge within the next, let's call it six months, you know, before the end of the year, with something like strawberry or maybe something that's going to drop quarter four of 2024, first quarter of 2025? Do you think we're going to see that kind of massive leap forward or this is kind of how reality is now. And it's going to be these kind of incremental improvements from here on out. Let me know what you think in the comments. My name is Wes Roth. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.